In this particular lecture, let's learn how we could render the fruits in its very own component rather than rendering the fruits over here like this. So in order to render fruits in a fruits component, we have to create a fruit component first. So let's go to the files here. Let's create a new component and this fruits is actually a list of fruits. Now let's create a separate component for fruit. So here I would create a file called as fruit.jsx. So in this file, let's create a component called as fruit. So as I earlier mentioned, whenever you have to create a component, you could straight away export that component as soon as you create it. So here I would say export default function fruit and let's return a simple div here. All right, so now we have the fruit component and for now, let's say the fruit component simply say something like fruit. All right. So once we have the component here, now instead of rendering the list of fruits like that, we have to render that component instead. That means if we go to the fruits list here, we have to map or we have to create as many number of components as we have inside this particular fruits array. So we are already mapping through the fruits array right here. That means this array is going to execute the number of times as many number of fruits are in there. Therefore, what we could do now is instead of actually rendering this logic here, which is fruit.name, fruit.emoji and fruit.price, instead now we could go ahead and render out the actual fruit. And what you could do is you could also get rid of this li tag over here as well. So let's get rid of that for now. So you could either comment it or you could just go ahead and straight away delete this thing. So it's better if you delete this. And now over here, I could say fruit. So make sure that you create a fruit component here, not fruits, or else you're going to have an error. So over here, I would say fruit, have a closing tag and make sure that fruit is actually imported. So this component should be imported here. And now if I go back to the browser, as you can see, we have five fruits here. And that's because what's happening here is that it's actually looping through this fruits array, which we have here. And as this contains five fruits, it will create the fruit component five times. But here, instead of displaying plain simple fruit or the text as fruit, we actually want to display the details which are being passed here. So now the question is, how exactly would you go ahead and pass those details to the fruit? So in order to pass those details like fruit.name, fruit.price and fruit.emoji. So let me actually bring that back up again. So I'll undo this and we actually need to pass in fruit.emoji, fruit.name and fruit.price, all of these three values to the fruit component. So let's get back the fruit component. So in order to pass the values like the name, the price and the emoji over here, we could make use of props. So I could say that the name prop, which I want to pass to this thing would be fruit.name. Now remember that this fruit which we have up over here is actually a fruit object which contains the single fruit which is present in there. And this fruit is actually a component which we have just created here. So here we are passing in the name prop and to the name prop we are passing in the value of fruit.name which passes these values right here. Alright, so after that let's also pass in the price and the emoji. So here I would say the price of this thing is going to be fruit dot price. And then finally, let's pass in the emoji. So emoji is going to be fruit dot emoji. All right. So now once we have passed everything up over here to this fruit component, now let's make the fruit component access those values. So as I earlier mentioned, in order to access those values here, what you could do is you could simply say name, price and emoji over here and you could destructure those values right away. So over here, I would destructure the name, price and the emoji. And once these things are destructured, I could finally go ahead and sort of render them over here instead of fruit. So over here, let's remove the fruit and instead say emoji. Let's display the emoji first, then the name. And let's say then we want to display the price. All right. So now if I go back here, as you can see, now we have the list of fruits, but this time every single fruit, which we have up over here is not a list element, but instead it's actually its very own component. So if you want to take a look at what exactly this is, you could actually go ahead, 
right click inspect you could view the HTML over here and you will be able to find that every time we actually loop inside this unordered list we are actually getting the fruit component and inside the unordered list you typically need to have list items so what you could also do is you could head back to the fruit component which you have and instead of returning a div here you could actually return a list item so over here you could say that all right i want to return a list item because i want to display this as a list so you could even do that and if you do that go back here hit refresh uh, now you have list items over here so if you open this thing up in the unordered list now you have list items but still we have some error in the console and the error over here says that every fruit which we have should have a unique key prop so that means now we also need to go ahead and pass in a key prop over here as well so i could say that okay i want to pass in a key here and the key value would be nothing but let's say fruit dot name and if i pass this thing up over here hit refresh as you can see the error over here has now disappeared so this is how you could go ahead and render a specific component using the map function so instead of rendering some simple html we are now rendering entire components and this is how you could go ahead and pass in data as props from one component to other component so in this case we are passing in the data from the fruits component to the fruit component so in here the fruits component is called as the parent component and the fruit component is called as the child component and we are passing in the data from the parent components to the child component and then in the child component we are actually accessing that data via props and we are simply displaying that data so i hope this kind of gives you an idea about how to render list of objects by creating components and list of components so in the next lecture, let's learn about conditional rendering of components in React.